Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So it is Sunday prep day. I am excited to be back in the kitchen this week. Many of you know that my husband and I went to Clearwater last Sunday to see our daughter, so I didn't meal prep last week. So I'm happy to get back at it this week. And on the menu this week for breakfast prep, I'm just doing a simple breakfast bowls, basically just breakfast items, mix them all up in a bowl. And then for lunch prep, I'm trying something different. I am doing a chicken and a sausage gumbo. So excited to try that. I've not tried this recipe before, so you may want to wait and see what my opinion is of it before you try it. So if you want to see how I meal prep for my husband and I for the week for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack, then stay with me. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Christy and I am planning us healthy. Okay guys, so I did just want to um, start my video off today with letting you know that um, for those of you who are watch me and you saw that last week I had kind of a bad week, um, I had we had a couple deaths in the family. My stepmother's mother, which is my step-grandmother, passed away and then my great aunt passed away. And um, I had mentioned that my stepfather's mother was not doing too well. She's 99 years old. And so I uh, just wanted to thank you all for all your condolences and also let you know that my other step-grandmother did pass away last night. So that's two grandmas and an aunt in one week. So, uh, and on top of a week that it's been, it was a crazy week at work and um, I'm not able to get away to go to New York to all their funerals. So it's been a tough week. Um, I almost didn't prep today, but then I thought, because I felt like I needed to be there for my family, it's not like I can do anything, but I felt like I needed, I should be there for my family, and then I decided that I really need to go ahead and do my prep, and then I thought about just prepping and not videoing, but then I thought that this is one of those things that I think I need to film for because I need you guys to see I want to share my life with you guys and I want to share with you that we all have things that come up in our lives that uh, affect us and the bottom line is we just have to still take care of ourselves first because if we don't take care of ourselves then we can't take care of other people so wanted to thank you guys so much for all your condolences really appreciate it my family appreciates it and um yeah, so just wanted to start my video off with that. So let's go ahead and get to prep. All right, guys, I'm going to start you start over at the stove today instead of at my prep table because I'm going to be cooking the breakfast. If you watched my grocery haul, uh, you may have seen that Aldi gave me the wrong chicken sausage. I usually use the breakfast chicken sausage. And those are one point per link. I think there's like seven in a package. So my breakfast bowls are usually four points, but I'm going to go ahead and use this kind that they gave me. These are five points per link. I'm going to cut them all up and see how much it looks like. And if I use all four links, then my breakfast bowls are going to be six points, which is still okay. I don't like anything over six points for breakfast. I prefer to have about four points, but up to six is fine. And then for potatoes, I'm going to use two cans of canned potatoes. I'm just going to dice them up small. And then I'm going to use 12 eggs. And normally I use half and half, but my half and half, I, I'm actually all out of half and half and I didn't realize it. Uh, so I am just going to use some cashew milk. It's, this is unsweetened and it's like similar to almond milk. It's, this is a little bit, I actually prefer the cashew a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to use a, a quarter of a cup of this. Somebody asked me why I put half and half in my eggs. I've just always, that's just always the way that I've done it. Uh, my mother taught me to put milk in my eggs and when I made scrambled eggs. And so I've just always used half and half. It just makes them a little bit more fluffier. But for today, I'm going to use the cashew milk. So I'm going to crack in 12 eggs. And 
And to the eggs, I'm gonna add my quarter of a cup of almond milk. And just mix that up real good. And again, you don't even have to put any milk in it if you don't want. All right, we're gonna set that aside. You can actually buy these potatoes, um, if you buy them like at Walmart, they actually have diced or sliced. I get these at Aldi, so they, they only have the whole potatoes. All right, then just cut the potatoes up into pieces. Okay, now we're just going to add our potatoes to a sprayed pan. I just sprayed my pan with olive oil spray. I don't know if you can see. I'm trying to move that. I'm trying to get both the counter and the stove. Okay, now I'm going to cut up the chicken sausage. This actually has cheese in it. It's Chipotle and Monterey cheese chicken sausage. So I may like this better than the breakfast sausage and it may be worth the extra two points. And you know what, I was gonna cook this with the potatoes but I think I'm gonna cook it separate. That way I can weigh everything out. Since these are five points per link, I definitely want to make sure that I'm not getting too much in one dish. So I'm gonna just cook everything separate and then that way weigh it out afterwards. Okay, now I went ahead and sprayed another pan. I'm gonna put these in there and get these cooking. And then I will get my eggs cooking. I guess when you cut them like this, it kinda of lets some of the cheese out. Okay, now I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to the potatoes. And you can add any other spices that you want. I'm just going to add a little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of onion powder. Okay, I'm going to let these sit and cook. And then I'm going to get my eggs cooking. I think you guys all know how to make scrambled eggs. And what I'm going to do though is I'm not going to cook them completely all the way. Uh, I'm just I'm gonna leave them I'm gonna take them off the stove a little bit earlier than I normally would if I'm eating them right away because we are going to be reheating them in the microwave and then that way they're not overdone when we reheat them in the microwave so I'm gonna let these cook and I will meet you guys back at my prep table okay so what I've done is I have weighed out my um, chicken sausage and my potatoes and now I'm gonna weigh out the eggs and then that way I know how much to put in each bowl so I just weigh it out in grams. And it looks like this is gonna come out to right about 600 grams. So I'm gonna put just about, uh, looks like just shy. I'm gonna put just shy of 100 grams of eggs in each bowl. And so that's pretty much how I do that. That way I have the exact portion in each bowl. So I'm gonna put these, I'm going to set these aside, let them cool down, and then we're going to get started on the gumbo for lunch. Okay, so we are going to move on to the chicken and sausage gumbo. I'm going to use turkey kielbasa for the sausage. This is a 13 ounce package and I'm going to use the whole thing. I'm also going to use uh, chicken breast and for the recipe that I have on the website that I put together last night, actually calls for chicken breast and you actually cook it in the gumbo at the end and you let it sit there for like an hour, an hour and a half. I actually had some chicken breast that I had already cooked and shredded up before. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this up because I want to get, I want to use this anyways. My recipe says to use a pound and a half of chicken breast. This is actually about a pound. So I'm going to be using a little bit, but that's okay because chicken breast is zero points. So it's not going to affect the points. Uh, the points on this is going to be four smart points. And then um, if you serve it over potatoes or rice or something, then you can add the points for that. Okay, I just had to go dump my phone. 
I've run out of room on my phone and I have to keep stopping every time. I really, really want to invest in a camera. I am going to invest in a camera. Okay, so I think where I left off, I was talking about, uh, you can serve this over rice or potatoes. Like I said, I've not made this before. I originally had planned on doing it over potatoes. I was gonna do like roasted potatoes. But I think because I'm doing potatoes in the breakfast bowls, I am going to probably just serve this over rice. So I may just add a little bit of rice to the bottom of each bowl. I really don't want three points worth. This is gonna be four points for the gumbo. So I'm probably just gonna add maybe a little bit less than a half a cup, maybe like a third of a cup to each one so that I can keep it to six points per serving. So what I'm doing now is just cutting up the vegetables. I'm using um, four or three stalks of celery. And then I'm going to use a pepper, a red pepper, an onion, and a zucchini and squash. And I think to cut those up, I'm going to use my chopper. Just because I do want the pieces a little bit smaller. And this is actually a chef's rival chopper. It's just a manual chopper. You just put your vegetables in there and put the top back on it. And you just manually hand slice it. But I love this. I would much rather have uh, a manual one than electric one because I feel like you have more control over how fast it dices it. So you just cut it until it's how you want it. I kind of shake it around in a little bit so if it doesn't get some of the bigger pieces. So as you can see, it just puts it into pieces like that. But you can actually get them even smaller. The more you keep doing it, the, the tinier the pieces will get. So I think I'm gonna leave it like that. There are a couple big pieces that I'm gonna pull out and just hand cut. Um, but I do have this on my Amazon, in my Amazon storefront. You guys know that I just got an Amazon storefront this week. So I will put the link to my storefront down in the description box below. It's Amazon.com slash shop slash planning us healthy. And then in the storefront, I list all, a lot of the things that I use. I have not, I've only set it up one day and I haven't added anything to it this week. So, but I will continue adding some of the stuff that I use. And I think for the zucchini and squash, I'll just cut those up myself. I actually had the zucchini and squash from last week and I really need to move, use it because otherwise it's going to go bad. And with gumbo, you can pretty much put whatever vegetables you want in it. Uh, this is just what I'm going to use. I may change it up. Like I said, I've never had it before, so depending on the flavor, I may want to add some things to it. for now and then get the onion cut up and I just cut it into pieces first before I put it in here just kind of helps break it up a little bit back over to my stove and show you how we put it all together okay so as I said I'm using 13 ounces of turkey kielbasa so the first thing I'm going to do is get that cooking and I'm just gonna cut it into 
little pieces like about that. I didn't really think this menu plan through for the week because <laughs> I'm using turkey sausage for lunch, uh, chicken sausage for breakfast, and then, like I said, I had originally planned on put this over potatoes, but then when I had the potatoes for breakfast, sometimes that happens. I try to do things like real different so that things aren't the same, but the good thing is the flavors are going to be entirely different with breakfast and lunch, so that's okay that it's sausage. Uh, gonna have to drink a lot of water because probably gonna be high in sodium. Okay, I'm actually using the same pan that I used for the other, the chicken sausage. So just spray that with olive oil spray and get the sauce, kielbasa cooking. I'm actually gonna cook it on this burner so that you guys can see what I'm doing with the rest. So I'm going to put that over about medium-high heat. That is actually pre-cooked, so you don't have to cook that all the way. I like to get mine a little bit browned. Uh, I just like the flavors of it better that way. So now what we're going to do is take a pot or a Dutch oven and whoops, we are going to add about half a cup of beef broth and I don't have the pan hot because I'm going to be mixing up the beef broth and the flour so about half a cup of beef broth and about three quarters of a cup of flour this does look like it's less than three quarters that's because flour is one of the things that I weigh out because when I use a measuring cup it always comes out to too much so I want to make sure that I don't get too many points on that. So just add that. Some people, when they mix their flour with liquid, they do it slowly. My mother always taught me that I should do it slowly and add it in a bowl beforehand. This is just the way I do it, and I just whisk it really good. So I just take my whisk, whisk it up real good. All right, and you definitely want to keep an eye on this. And I think I need to change the wording on my website because I said when it reaches a boil. I guess I meant like when it starts to bubble. I think I'm going to change the recipe. I'm going to add a little bit more. I think I'm going to do three quarters of a cup of broth. So I will change that on the recipe. That's why I didn't used to put my recipes up until after I did my meal prep. But whenever I put my, my menu plan up for the week, people want the recipes. So I've been trying to do them beforehand, but I think I'm going to go back to doing them after because especially if it's ones like this that I am making and doing myself, now that is how the consistency should be while it's cooking. So definitely three quarters of a cup of broth. So now we will let it sit there and cook until it starts to bubble. So I will change that on the website. Actually, I'll do it in a few minutes when I dump, do my next dump of my phone. Let me get in here a little bit better. And just keep an eye on your kielbasa. Make sure to keep stirring that up. Okay, now it's starting to really thicken. We'll turn the heat down now. Now we're going to add our vegetables. And our seasoning, I'm adding some Cajun seasoning. And I'm going to add two teaspoons I'm putting a lot in because this is actually just a quarter of a teaspoon and then you can also use on my website I have uh, cayenne pepper an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper 
I'm not going to put cayenne pepper in because I don't think I have any left. So I'm going to leave that out. And then now just mix all that together. Just kind of get the vegetables coated with the flour mixture. At this point, <laughs> I need to use a spoon. Okay, now we are going to turn the heat up and add the chicken broth. So I'm using 32 ounces of chicken broth, and this is actually reduced sodium chicken broth. Just pour in about a quarter of the container at once, and then slowly mix it, and just keep adding the broth as you, like add some, then mix it, then add a little more. Keelbasa. Alright, mine's starting to brown real good. I'm actually going to shut my kielbasa off now. Let me show you what, I don't know if you can see it from there. So, I like mine like that. So you can just cook your kielbasa until it's the way you like it. So just keep adding in more broth and keep stirring it up. Okay, once that's all mixed together, then we're going to add the kielbasa. Stir that in. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. So because I already have my chicken breast cooked, I am going to add that later. So we're going to just bring this to a boil, and then we're going to reduce the heat to low. And it's going to sit here and simmer for about an hour to an hour and a half. If you're cooking your chicken in it, then just keep cooking it until your chicken is done. But uh, I want my vegetables to be not I don't want my vegetables to be real firm so I'm just gonna let that bring get to a boil and then I'm just gonna turn it down to low and cover it and let it sit here and in the meantime I'll go back to my prep table meet you back at the prep table and put the breakfast bowls together and move on to dinner okay I had to go take my contacts out they were really bothering me today so I have to deal with my glasses today uh, one thing I forgot about the gumbo that I wanted to put in it is garlic you guys know I love garlic. I don't know how I can forget the garlic. So I have this huge garlic bulb. Why the garlic is so big, I don't know. But I'm just gonna dice up some, mince up some of that and just throw it in there. I actually have it on simmer now. All right, I'm gonna just add that to the pot. I was looking at that gumbo and I don't even know if I'm gonna, put it over rice or potatoes. To me, it looks like it's going to be filling it up with everything that's in it. So I'm, I don't know that I'm gonna add any points. I may just do a four point gumbo. Uh, maybe the first day I'll eat it plain and see how I like it. And then I'll decide the next day if I'm gonna put it over rice or not. Okay, so for the breakfast bowls, like I said, I've weighed everything out already. So now I'm just gonna weigh them separately into the dishes. And I have my little notes here so like i said i need a little bit less than 100 grams of eggs i'm going to need about 41 grams of sausage and 82 grams of potato all right so let's get this on grams so i'm just going to do one for now and show you how much is going to be in each one then about 41 grams of sausage. And about 82 grams of potatoes. And 
then just mix it up. And there is our little breakfast bowl. You could also add che a piece of cheese if you wanted for another point. Uh, like I said, these for us is, are going to be six points. I would, so I'm not going to add the cheese. Uh, if I made them with the other chicken sausage, then I probably would add a cheese because they would only be four points. So depending on what you use, if you use the small breakfast sausage, make sure it's not the maple kind. There's like a country breakfast, I think it's called, country breakfast sausage, country something. That is the one that's one point per link. But if you use the one with maple, that one is more. So I'm just, so in that case, I would add cheese, but for this one, I'm not going to add cheese. So I'm just going to go ahead and weigh out the rest of them. And then if you want to add salt and pepper, you can. Since I added spices to the potatoes, I'm not going to add anything more to it. So that's it for the breakfast. So I'm going to cover them all up, and then I will start on dinners. So this week for dinners, we actually, whoops, that doesn't go on there. We are actually going to be doing crock, crock, crock pot freezer meals. So uh, as I mentioned, I have conferences this week, Monday and Tuesday, so I needed to do something a little bit different this week, and a lot of you have really been wanting to see how I do my freezer meals, so I thought, why not just go ahead and do a week where I do crock pot freezer meals, and I think what I do is I will start doing that maybe once a month or once every other month, uh, because a lot of you really enjoy those crock pot meals, and it's great because you can just throw them, uh, put them at Put them together ahead and you can put them in your freezer and so that way you can do a whole bunch at one time all right so let me put these away and clean up a little bit and get started and i wasn't going to film this part but i decided that i would so some of you have seen a video i have out there to show how i do my meat in bulk i buy a i buy bulk meat from sam's club and then i portion it out myself i put it portion it out myself i put it in i use a vacuum sealer that I also have on my Amazon store and I vacuum seal everything I put it into individual bags so I needed pork I need pork chops for this week and I picked this pork loin up uh, at Sam's Club a couple weeks ago and I just haven't I haven't done anything with it yet so I'm going to just make a couple pork chops out of it and what I want is about two five ounce pieces of pork chops And I'm also going to cut some of the fat off. I'm not going to cut all of it off. But I'm just going to trim it up just a little bit. And we'll put that on there. So actually, that's about six ounces, which is fine. Uh, five to six ounces is fine for what we're doing. It may change the points. So just keep in mind, uh, the points that I have that I put on my website are the points for the ingredients in there. There are times where you'll see me, I might add something or do something a little different on here. Just keep in mind that whatever's posted on the website is what is on there. Okay, six ounces, good guess. Okay, I'm gonna do the rest of that later. So what I'm gonna do is I will continue cutting those into pork chops and then the end, I'm gonna do like a, a pork loin for the crock pot. So I'm doing dinners a little bit different this week with the exception of one. I am going to have my favorite salmon recipe which is the basil parmesan salmon. My, uh, we just love that recipe. Uh, I will share the link to that. So if you're new to my channel, what I normally do for dinners is I just pre-package everything. So I just have everything weighed out, measured out. I know how many points there are per serving. And it just makes it a little bit easier when I get home from work during the week. So that is normally how I do it. I don't cook anything, don't cut anything up or anything like that. 
This week I'm doing things a little bit different. Um, if you're new, I am actually doing some crock pot freezer meals this week. Um, the air fryer salmon will be different. That'll be normal. I'll just put that in the fridge, but everything else is going to be crock pot freezer meals. So I'm going to start with this one and just show you what I normally do. Uh, I actually usually do like some fresh broccoli with this one and some rice. And what I do is just cut the broccoli up and put it in the bottom of the bag. But for this week, I'm doing frozen Brussels sprouts and they're just going to go in the microwave. So I won't be putting those in the bag. So all I'm going to do for this one is just make the topping. So for this one, I'm using three tablespoons of mayonnaise and I'm using light Hellman's light mayonnaise. And this isn't going to be enough topping for three servings, and it's going to be two points per serving. And then I'm going to add to that, I'm going to add about two tablespoons of Parmesan cheese. Actually, it's going to about do it. So two tablespoons of Parmesan cheese mixed in with that. And then I'm going to save a half a tablespoon of Parmesan cheese just to put over the top. Uh, the night that I make it. So just mix this up. And then the night that you make this, this is actually an air fryer recipe. And like I said, all the recipes that I'm making today will be linked down below. Some of them will be uh, on my website, planningushealthy.com. And some of them will be linked to another website. If they're not my recipe, then I will link the original recipe down below. And of course, also, if they're adapted from a recipe like this one was, this one was adapted by Skinny Taste, I will also link the original recipe too. All right, so you want to mix that up. And then the other thing that goes in here is six, uh, about six leaves of basil. And you're just going to mince the basil up. I'm actually not putting the basil in there now because it ends up being too strong. So I just put it in a separate container. So the night that it's that we eat this, I'm going to mince up the garlic or mince up the basil. I'm going to mix the basil with this topping, spread it over the salmon, and then sprinkle it with the additional parmesan. So now I will I have my salmon already pre-measured. I'm going to put that in there. I usually just make enough for my husband and I for two. Uh, if you're new, the breakfasts and lunches I do for three days. Uh, I prep, I prep for three days for my husband and I, so I make six servings for breakfast and lunch, and then for dinners, I usually just prep through till Wednesday. Tonight's going to be a little bit different. I'm doing one extra, but that's just because they're freezer meals, so we'll be okay with that. So, I, for this one, I'm putting the salmon in here. I'm actually making three portions of the topping, um, because sometimes I split the salmon into three, just depends on how we feel that night. And in case anybody asks, because I usually get asked this question, these containers that I use, uh, these are actually ones that I got back from when I used to do um, meal delivery services, like Home Chef and things like that. People usually ask me every week where I get these. And then I also have these other ones, like I put the basil in. These I picked up at Dollar Tree. They were a dollar for 10 of them. They're not screw on like this one, uh, but they do. They, they work good for what I need. So then I just put everything into the bag. Okay, and then the other half a tablespoon I'm just gonna put in this container and we'll put that in there as well. And like I said, I'm just gonna be having frozen Brussels sprouts and I'm gonna use the 90 second ready rice that just goes in the microwave. So that's all I'll do with that one. So that's just all prepackaged and ready to go. So I'll put that in the fridge and then I'll show you how I do the freezer meals. I'm going to start with the uh, pork chop one since I got, just cut my pork chops. So for the first one we're doing is slow cooker Dijon pork chops with potatoes and carrots. The recipe that I'm using I actually have on there that I'm having red potatoes. But I have regular potatoes still so I'm just going to add those to it. So what you need to do is just mark your bag with what it is. If you are doing a lot of freezer meals, then make sure to write the date that it is because I don't recommend keeping these in your freezer any longer than about three months. So what I usually do, because I'm using these this week, I didn't bother putting the date. 
So then go ahead and put your, how many points are in it? So this one I have nine Freestyle Smart Points per serving, and how many servings are in the bag? In this case, I'm just doing two servings in this bag. Then just put your directions of what you need for, I don't, you probably can't see. So then just put the instructions on the bag. So in this case, I have thaw in fridge overnight, place in slow cooker with half a cup of chicken broth. So I'm not gonna put the chicken broth in there right now. I'll do that when I cook. And then cook on low six to eight hours. So that's all you do, that's all you write on the bags. All right, so then you wanna just put them in your little bag holder. So all we are going to do is this one is a super easy one we're just going to put the pork chops in there and like i said i have about six ounce pieces uh, i may i may have to change the points the points on here the nine freestyle smart points is for five ounce pieces so keep that in mind if you change the ounces or change how much you use if it's chicken breast or something that's zero that's fine but when it's pork chops or something then it may change the points Usually with pork chops, it's one point per ounce, so it will probably make this 10 points instead of nine. Okay, I feel like my mind is just scattered today, you guys. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm taking forever in this, like it's dragging on. So if it is, I truly apologize. Uh, you guys know I got a lot on my mind. So, uh, but I would appreciate it if you're still with me, if you can give this video a thumbs up, I really appreciate it. Okay, so now I'm gonna add, uh, I was gonna do a half a cup of Dijon mustard, but I think I won't do quite that much. So maybe about a quarter of a cup of Dijon mustard, and you're just gonna dump it right in the bag. And then we're gonna add a little bit of garlic powder I'm doing about a half a teaspoon. I just eyeball it. And about a half a teaspoon of onion powder. And then just some salt and pepper. And the next thing I'm gonna do is cut up some carrots. And so I'm just gonna cut the ends off. I already washed all my produce before I started prepping. So just make sure to wash your produce. I don't show that part. I know some channels show them washing the produce, uh, but I figured my meal preps are long enough anyway. So just cut the carrots however you want. I'm just going to cut them in chunks. And if you've seen me uh, make carrots before, you know that I don't peel my carrots. I leave them with the skins on, same with the potatoes. And... I just wash them really good with a vegetable brush. So just put the carrots in there. I'll cut up a little bit more. And then like I said, I was going to use red potatoes, but because I had potatoes I wanted to use up, I am just using regular potatoes. I have here about a 10 ounce potato and I'm just gonna cut it into chunks. There is, I have seen some people that say they do not freeze their potatoes because they don't turn brown. I've not had any problem with it uh, if it's mixed in with a lot of stuff. Um, so I do it, but that's up to you. If you would prefer not to put the potato in there, you can definitely just wait and just cut it up just as easy that day. But I've, I've never really had any issues with it. All right, then that's all we're going to do. So now what I do is I seal it up first without getting the air out. So then I'm gonna just mix it all together just so I can get that mustard all coated all over it. Okay, once it's all mixed, then open the bag again. And then now you just wanna try to get it flat in the bag. So sometimes if you have big pieces of carrots, you may have to just adjust those. The goal here is to get as much air out of the bag as you can.
And the best way is just go ahead and close the whole thing and then at the very end, and I'm going to flip this over because I'm getting the words off of it. So close the end so that you're leaving just a little bit of this end open. Close it and then just push the air out the best you can before you close up that last, end, that last part. So when you're done, it should almost like stick together. And that's all you do. So that's how the freezer mill is done. And I kind of, because my hands were a little bit wet, I got some of my words off. I think I was still wet. So just be careful with that that you don't get the words off. And then what you'll do is you can lay these flat in your freezer so they don't, they don't take much room. So then the only other thing we're going to do with this, the morning we have it, we're going to dump it in the slow cooker. We're going to put about a half a cup of chicken broth in there and then let it cook for about six to eight hours and that'll be done. Okay, for the next one, it is going to be slow cooker ground beef hash. And this is basically ground beef and hash browns. Um, I'm going to put onions and some spices in there. So this one is going to be six smart points per serving. This one is going to make four servings. So I may end up, maybe later in the week, we'll end up having it for uh, a lunch, one of the last days in the week instead of the turkey wrap or something. Uh, so for this one, the instructions are to thaw in the fridge overnight, dump in the slow cooker, cook on low four to six hours, then we're going to top it with a half a cup of Velveeta slice, or not Velveeta slices, Velveeta shreds, and then cook for 25 more minutes. So that is what's on my bag on that one. So for this one, what we want to do on this one is dump in 12 ounces of hash browns. I'm using the Aldi hash browns. These are uh, Seasons Choice that I get from Aldi. The other ones that are good to use that are low point hash browns are the great value shredded hash browns. Those are good ones to use. I use either or. So 12 ounces, just dump it right in there. And then I have one pound of ground beef and this is the 96%. I actually get this at Aldi, but you can get this anywhere. 96% um, lean ground beef. And go ahead and cook it, just brown it up first. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is oops, cut up a little bit of, un, of celery. Put that in the bag. Then I'm going to cut up an onion. And I think I'm just going to use half an onion because I'm going to be putting onion soup mix in the, in the bag also. So I'll just use a half an onion. And then some salt and pepper. And I'm going to use about three tablespoons of onion soup mix. broth in there and this one I'm going to use beef broth all right so I'm going to put about a cup of beef broth in there and that is it so that's how super quick and easy these freezer meals are then chase take it off there and do the same thing close the bag and just kind of mix it up a little bit this one I'm going to be a little bit more gentle with I don't know why. <laughs> I guess just because the hash browns are in there. Okay, then once it's mixed, do like before, open the bag a little bit. This one's going to be a little bit easier to spread it out. So just try to spread it out as much as you can for the whole length of the bag without it coming out the top. Close up about three quarters of it and then squeeze the rest of the air out. And there we go. 
and then just lay that in on your in your freezer with the other one. The night before you have them, just pull them out and let them sit in your, just pull them right out from the freezer, put them straight in your fridge. Sometimes they are a little bit frozen still the next morning and that's fine. You can just still dump them in your crock pot. I'm really making a mess here, you guys. All right, the next one is chicken fajitas. This one is actually one that I got from newleafwellness.biz, and it looked like a really good chicken fajita recipe, so that's what I'm doing. Now, this one is actually comes out to zero points for everything that's in the bag, and then where the points are gonna come in is depending what I use. If I use a, put them on like um, a wellness, an extreme, Olay Wellness Extreme Wrap, then that'll be a point, and then if I add cheese, sour cream, uh, depends on what you do with your chicken fajitas. But everything in the bag is gonna be zero points. So for this one, I have uh, add points for toppings, thaw in fridge overnight, dump in slow cooker, and cook on low six to eight hours, shred chicken, and serve with additional cooked onions and peppers. So if you wanna cook some additional onions and peppers, you can. The ones that we're gonna be putting in here are basically just gonna flavor the chicken. Um, so I will probably cook some extra onions and peppers that night and put them over the fajitas. And then serve on tortillas with lettuce, cheese, tomato, sour cream, guacamole, whatever you want for your chicken fajitas. All right, so for this one, I actually have some frozen chicken here. I didn't want to unthaw it and then refreeze it. So I'm just putting my frozen chicken in there. <laughs> actually, it's gonna weigh down my bag. So these are not really strong to hold a lot. All right, so now the next thing I'm gonna do is cut up my pepper. And I'm gonna use a red pepper and just cut it into slices. Like I said, make sure that your produce is washed first because you will not be washing. When I do my other dinners, I don't wash my produce first because I'm not putting them actually together. These are going straight from the bag into the slow cooker, so you're gonna be eating those, so you definitely need to make sure that all your stuff is washed for, for your freezer meals. And we wanna cut up an onion. And this is gonna be enough for four servings also. Now it's zero points, but again, it's not zero calories, and who knows what's gonna happen to the points once the WW changes come soon. I am really kind of just waiting until the changes come. I'm not making a big deal of it. When it happens, it happens, and I'll see. I'm not gonna try to worry about it or get myself all stressed about it. I'm actually excited to see what they have, so we'll see when it comes out together. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is cut up some garlic. This is the equivalent of about two cloves. Okay, and then we want about a tablespoon of honey, which I thought I had some, a whole big thing of honey in there and I don't, so I'm hoping I have a tablespoon here. Okay, and since I only put a half an onion in there, I am going to put a half of a red onion in as well. All right, I have really got a mess here. Okay, next thing we want is spices. So I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of chili powder in there. And about a teaspoon of paprika. And the recipe calls for two teaspoons of cumin. I'm just gonna do one. And also a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. 
And then you can also put a little bit of red pepper flakes in there if you want. I'm just going to put a touch. And just mix those around. Like I said, my chicken is frozen, so it's just kind of unthawing a little bit. But it's okay, it'll mix everything together. You just wanna try and get the spices all mixed together so they're not lumped in one spot. But when you put them in the crock pot, it'll still all cook up good. Okay, and there is the chicken fajitas. So that's it. We are done with dinners. Now, <laughs> I gotta clean this mess up. All I have left to do now is portion out the lunches and uh, put together my snacks. All I have for snacks this week is pudding, um, yogurt, so I don't have to do anything as far as prepping those. I have a watermelon, so I'm just gonna cut the watermelon up. And um, so let me clean up and, show, and portion out the lunch. Okay guys, so see this is what happens. <laughs> When I have way too much on my mind, I forgot to do the yellow pepper. And green pepper I'm gonna save and cook. So I need to cut up my yellow pepper. I knew when I <laughs> when I was cutting it that there was something, I was like, there's something I'm forgetting. So red pepper, yellow pepper, yellow onion. That is why, because I read about the yellow onion. But yellow pepper. away you know I could try and fix the video and just insert it but you guys know things happen this is how this is how it goes all right now I think I have it right so now I'm gonna finish cleaning up and I will come back to you to portion out the lunches okay so I'm gonna weigh out the gumbo and what I decided to do I was going to put these in bowls but I decided to use these uh, compartment trays instead just in case we do decide to have um, rice or potatoes but I'm telling you from the looks of this this you guys this looks so good uh, with, I'll show you it, it, the close-up of it at the end it looks really good and I, I just don't think that I'm gonna need potatoes or rice with it so I'm going to weigh the entire portion out in grams so I can determine how much will go in each bowl. And I'm hoping it's not going to be too much for my scale. So I'm just going to have to watch it carefully. Okay, so it is about 2480 so about 413 grams is going to go in each bowl or each dish i guess so now the hard part is going to be the juice i don't want to end up with the end just having juice so i'm just gonna have to try and do it the best that i can so like i said i'm just going to leave a compartment for the rice Wow, this is going to be a lot. That is going to be a pretty good portion. Okay, I'm going to just finish portioning these out. Okay, so that is it for the lunches. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to have these. Uh, so that I'll just leave this and then that way we can decide if we want um, rice. Maybe one day we might want it and another day we won't, so we'll see.
All right, now I'm just going to get my watermelon cut up and then I will show you what we end up with. I'm going to do is weigh out my snacks so if you're uh, if you already are familiar with this feel free to fast forward if you're new to my channel basically all I do is just weigh out my snacks I use the snack factory pretzels these are actually the Aldi version of snack factory pretzels I put 28 grams in each bag and then that way they're already portioned because I sometimes when I get home from work sometimes I'm hungry and I want a snack and these are perfect just pull them out they're already weighed out because if I leave them in the bag and I open the bag and try and even if I count them I still I'm just not good with that so I'm all out of snack bags so I'm having to use these so I'm just gonna weigh out 28 grams whoops and I usually do about four bags And then I use these with the um, queso dip from Aldi. This is one point for two tablespoons. And I just weigh that out. I don't, I don't do that. I could probably go ahead and portion those out now, but I don't go that far. I just try and make it a little bit easier, but not crazy insane. And then the other thing that I'm going to do, so as I mentioned, my husband and I have breakfast prepped for three days. I actually have a conference this week, so I don't need it every single day, but um, the other days we usually do like a sandwich or a wrap, um, something like that. And then for breakfast the other days, one day we usually do a yogurt. In fact, I'm going to do a yogurt when I go to the conference Tuesday. And then um, one day I usually do cereal. I use fiber one cereal I just weigh it out and put it in a bag and I take it to work with me with a half a cup of milk um, and I, I'm going to use the cashew milk so I may already have this may be okay no that's actually too much you know what actually I'm going to leave that I'm not going to why waste a bag so this is actually 60 grams it was actually 62, but I figured two for the bag. So I'm going to leave this in here, and I'm just going to take it to work with me that way. I have a scale at work, so I'm going to know that this is two portions. So rather than me waste the bag, I'm just going to leave that there, or leave that in there. And then my milk. I actually may still have some cashew milk, or some almond milk there. So oh, we need milliliters. So 120. This is gonna be interesting. Should fill it right to the top. Close to it. Okay, so there's 120 milliliters. And like I said, I think I actually still have a half a cup there from Friday because I didn't I don't think I ate it ate it Friday. So that'll be for my breakfast. Um, I think we got everything done. I feel like this took forever today. I don't know why. Um, it, today's, it's about three hours, but I did have to wait a little bit, and I kind of took some breaks, and I had to unload my phone literally probably six times this time, so I really need to look into getting a camera, because that is holding me back. All right, so I'm going to put everything to spread out and show you guys what we ended up with. Okay, guys, this is what we ended up with. And for those of you who have OCD, I know that's going to irritate you right there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so um, we'll start down here with the breakfast. So these are our breakfast bowls. And I need to take a picture of that actually for my recipe. 
So these are the breakfast bowls. So these ended up being six points because of the turkey sausage or the chicken sausage that I used. But if you use the breakfast chicken sausage, those would be four points. And then I have my half a cup of cashew milk and my fiber one cereal. And then our lunches. Look at this, you guys. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. So good. So that is our lunches and those are four points and then I'm going to decide if I'm going to put rice in there or not. Um, I'll see. I just haven't decided yet if I want to do that. And then for dinners, uh, of course, we have our salmon. So this one I'll just put in the fridge like this and then... Ooh, I got air in that one. I'll have to get some of that air out. So then for the rest of them, they're going to go in the freezer. These are our crock pot freezer meals. I just pulled them back out of the freezer. So we have the chicken fajitas for zero, the slow cooker ground beef hash for six points, slow cooker Dijon pork chops and potatoes for nine points. And then I have my snacks, um, the queso for the pretzels, our watermelon, and then these are our snacks, which I'm actually getting low. I need to restock on those. Um, the fat-free or sugar-free pudding we have, those are two points. And then our yogurts are also two points. So that's what we ended up with this week. Okay, guys, so that's it for this week. I was really happy to get back in the kitchen, but I have to admit I'm a little bit tired today. Um, but I have a lot on my mind with everything. So uh, again, as usual, I really appreciate you guys. I am sorry if it seemed like I wasn't my normal self today. I feel like I was a little bit scatterbrained, but it's life and I still want to put the video out for you guys. So uh, just don't mind me and just pay attention to the food. So if you like this, please give it a thumbs up and share with other people. I am getting really close to 3000 subscribers. I appreciate y'all so much. And like I said, I will have all the recipes listed down in the dis description box below. I'll have the links to whether it's my website, planningushealthy.com, which feel free to go there at any time and check out all the recipes I have on there. If it's not my recipe, I will make sure to link you to the uh, proper website. Okay, so I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and I will talk to you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Christy, and I'm Planning Us Healthy.